Now, what did Andrew Tate just do? Also, the man himself here, what cancelled? The legend is here, inshallah, his new home. And Let's get into this video and then I'll come back and I'll break it down for you. I'm going to bring you a very special show soon to all the people who supported him his whole way. Bro, thank you very much, man. Thank, thank you, you, brother. Glad to be here. <laughs> I might convert to Islam right now. We need to do this for the future of our children, the future of our great country, the future of mankind. This is your brother Rathman ibn Farooq and I've got a very important message. Alhamdulillah, our brother Eddie is setting up the Dean Center, not just the Dean Show, but the Dean Center, a full Dawa Academy, a Masjid, a Dawa Center in America, the first of its type, the a, a groundbreaking project. And I want everybody, as I'm supporting it, I want everybody to support it, so we can take the Dawa to the next level. We need the Dean Center. Please support it. Now here are a few things that I want to share with you. If Andrew Tate did accept Islam, right off the bat, he would have went to the most important thing. He went from throwing up the Trinity to throwing up the pure monotheism, which is called Tawheed. Which for any thinking person, rational person, knows that this is rational, logical, and this is something that all of the prophets of God, like Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and the last and final messenger sent to mankind, Prophet Muhammad did. And he went from worshiping the creation to worshiping the creator. If Andrew Tate did accept Islam, all you see him doing right there is mimicking the way that Jesus prayed. Isn't that something amazing? If Andrew Tate truly did accept Islam, and we pray to God Almighty Allah that he did, and inshallah, if not now, soon, that he is following his fitrah, brothers and sisters and all of humanity out there. What's the fitra? That's the innate disposition of the human being to want to worship and submit to the creator of all, not to the creation. That way of life of submitting your will, not to yourself, to your desires, not to a human being, to angels, saints, messengers. No, but to the one creator up above, the creator of the heavens and earth, God Almighty Allah. And this is Islam, to submit your will entirely to the creator of the heavens and earth. Just like in the Lord's Prayer, O our Father, O our in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That is Islam, to submit your will to the will of the creator, God Almighty Allah. That's what Andrew Tate did if he did accept Islam. And one final thing I wanna share with you, if he did accept Islam, he's our brother in the deen, he's our brother in Islam. So everything that he has done in the past, you can't hold that over him. Of course, you get the chance to advise him if you meet him lovingly, kindly, to go ahead and leave because it's a transition. It takes time. But anything a human being would have done in the past, it doesn't matter. All those things get wiped out. That's the beauty of Islam. That a person can have sins up to the heavens and the earth. But if he calls on God Almighty alone and he asks God Almighty to forgive this individual, male or female, and he truly submits his or her will and he comes into this beautiful way of life of Islam, submission to the creator, not the creation, and he agrees what's in his very nature, following the fitra, like we talked about, his innate disposition, following the way of Jesus, Moses, Abraham, the last and final messenger sent to mankind, he says, La ilaha illallah. Andrew Tate would have said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu. Meaning, I testify, I bear witness, I swear that there's nothing worthy of worship, not the cars, not the money, nothing. Not Jesus, not the sun, not the moon, nothing that you can fathom or imagine in creation is worthy of worship. Now tell me that doesn't make sense. Except the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who created Jesus, the one who created Moses, the one that Jesus called people to worship. Because Jesus never, ever claimed that he was God, a literal son of God, and calling people to worship him, never. So this is the testimony that he would take to bring him into the fold of Islam. And that Muhammad is the last and final messenger sent to mankind. Easy, straightforward, all the previous sins are forgiven, so you can't hold those things 
up against his head, whatever he has done in the past, but he can go ahead and rectify his affairs and start to call people away from debauchery, from a life of gambling, from a life of alcohol promiscuity. He can promote family values. He can promote all these good things because he'd be truly a man of God, a man who loves his creator and he loves what his creator loves and he hates what his creator hates. So slowly but surely, he would be away from all these things. The more he did Islam, the more you live Islam, you know Islam, you know your creator, you love your creator, you fear your creator, you live between fear and hope, and you live for the next life of Jannah, of paradise, and you fear the hellfire, so you want to be an upright, outstanding human being, and that's what Islam motivates you, teaches you to be. So that's, in a nutshell, what Andrew Tate, by taking that first step, he would be doing, believing, and God willing, inshallah, Andrew Tate, inshallah, connect with you again, my brother, and I pray for you that God Almighty Allah guide you, and I leave you with this simple homework. Now that you have got to experience what it is to pray like Jesus, like Moses, like Abraham, like Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, continue to do that. If you haven't already accepted Islam, and ask the creator of the heavens and earth, keep asking, beseeching, earnestly, guide me, guide me, guide me, while your head is in the lowest position that it can be. And like I said, this is the way that Jesus prayed, so you're only mimicking him because he only prayed to the Creator. He didn't pray to himself, nor was he God calling upon himself. He was calling upon God Almighty, Allah in Aramaic, same thing, Allah. Hey, enough said. I hope that this has helped you understand the situation a little bit better, and we'll see you next time. Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Thought on uh, Islam and everything, because I know in the, in the Quran and stuff, like you could have up to four wives and stuff, so. I've seen you talk about it a little bit, but I would like to know like, what you think about it. I think it's the last religion on the planet. You think I it's the right religion? I think it's the last religion. So if it's, the, if it's the last true religion on the planet, then it has to be the correct one. Cannot leave without giving you a gift. If you're not yet Muslim and you're tuning in to see what these Muslims are talking about and you like a free copy of the Quran, go ahead and visit thedeanshow.com. We'll take care of the postage and everything and get it delivered to you. And if you still have some questions, about Islam, call us at 1-800-662-4752. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. And if you like this episode of The Dean Show, like this video, share this video far and wide, and support us on our Patreon page so we can continue this work. Thank you for tuning in. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.